Bench, I'm going to talk about um, a little bit different topic. I'm an industrial engineer, and I'm going to be talking about uh, logistics. And I'm going to be talking about a little bit of well, planning. This is a long title. I'm going to explain what is this about. By the way, I'm from the Arizona uh, State University, and I'm here collaborating with the uh, University of Los Andes and also with the University of uh, Tanca. So I'm going to just skip this. And, and uh, something that probably you are well aware of is uh, the problem with obesity problem in, in the United States. So because of that, uh, there is a lot of emphasis in eating healthier food. In particular, increasing the consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables. So that's, that has been a, an emphasis on in the United States. And because of that, and there are, here are different um, uh, statistics, uh, for instance, all of them are not very, uh, are very uh, good. Uh, so, but uh, you, you, would, uh, you would think that based on this information is that the, in, the, the um, increase in consumption of uh, fresh fruits fruit and vegetables would be a lot higher, but now it has been around flat, okay? Especially fresh fruits uh, has been, has increased, here, this is not uh, very good. Because, uh, that doesn't uh, doesn't show that real picture. The real picture is actually the consumption of fresh vegetables has increased in the United States. What has happened here is that people has a, uh, have stopped eating potatoes. So because of that, it would <laughs> seems that actually the consumption of fresh uh, vegetables uh, had, had, had increased. But something that uh, that is important is. If we look at different pictures, so, so we, we, we see a different we, we see a different picture. For instance, something that is important here, especially for Chile, is this line here. The uh, this is the consumption of uh, U.S. fruit consumption, and if you see, if you look at this, the imports of fresh fruits actually has increased a lot. And Chile has been extremely successful in exporting fruits, or had been a, 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 a very successful, particular grapes. Apple, avocados, and uh, two, 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 two or three different things. But one of the problems with this is that uh, to export f actually fresh fruit is very complex. You need a lot of uh, very uh, precise logistics to do that. Not only not only you need that logistics, but you need that planning along the supply chain so that you are going to be able to to reach a far market like for instance the United States from Chile. So you have to be very precise on that. So in Chile, just to just to give an idea, what is the role of Chile in that? Is um, in the year 2013, uh, Chile exported over 2.5 uh, uh, million tons of fresh fruit, with value of about, about 4.5 billion dollars. Chile, Chile is the seventh most important source of agricultural products in the United States. If we look at winter kind of import, probably Chile number two after Mexico. Okay. Uh, in fresh fruit, probably Chile number one, Mexico is in vegetables. So Chile had an annual uh, growth of about 5%. But the problem with this is that the market is changing, and if Chile doesn't adapt to the new market, probably Chile is going to, uh, is going to lose an opportunity. Or it's going to lose market, market share. And in fact, if you look at the statistics, if you look at the statistics about the, about the avocados, for instance, or apples, actually the export of Chile either, either are flat or yeah, are decreasing. Okay. So just to give you an idea of what is what Chile is exporting, is if you take uh, these two products, grapes and apples, they represent over 50% of what Chile is exporting. So if you look at this, so you're going to see that, that after that you look at like a Pareto analysis is that, 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 that the first two or three uh, fruits actually they consume the, they are the bulk of what Chile is exporting. Unfortunately for Chile, if you look at this, if you look at the consumption of the different fruits in the United States, you are going to see that things like apple, actually, the consumption has increased. Uh, if you look at the second main, uh, main uh, product in, the, in Chile, actually, the uh, um, grapes is actually almost flat. But what's something that you see is that there are some opportunities here that actually, for instance, avocados, cherries, blueberries, and raspberries actually look at the percentage of increase. So one of the things that you can say is, well, what about if Chile is going to uh, 
focus on those in those products. And one of the main advantages of Chile is the reverse uh, climate. So when it's winter in, in when it's uh, winter in the United States, it's going to be it's, it's summer in Chile. So you can uh, reach the U.S. market very fairly. But one of the problems with this type, with the exception of avocados, with cherry, blueberries, and raspberries, is the type of supply chain that you need is a lot more precise than actually you need for apples. They are a lot more perishable. So one of the problems with that is that uh, that uh, in the regular, the traditional uh, chains, the traditional supply chain, you have a lot of intermediaries. And Chile has been extremely successful by using the using the figure of exportadoras, okay? But uh, one of the, the questions is if those exportadoras are going to have the same role to play in the future, okay? And in a second, I'm going to explain why my question. Just to understand a little bit uh, the economics of this, is for just, this is in general, for every dollar that the final consumer is going to pay, about 20 cents they reach the farmer, okay? But in the case of uh, exporting countries, there is a different story here. Because here, for instance, this is the imports, but most of this money is not going to go to the growers. It's going to go to intermediaries. So I don't know how much, what is the percentage, but if for every dollar that the final consumer is going to pay in the United States, probably less than 10 cents are going to reach the, 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 the grower. Okay. So, uh, this is, a, the, this is a more recent uh, data, but this, the picture is about the same. So something that we need to be aware of is that market forces are actually change, are forcing changes in the supply chain. What has happened in the, in the recent past uh, is that the big supermarket chain actually they are looking to get closer to the grower. Now the question is how do we do that? Okay. For instance, if, if we look at the global environment, uh, Europe, Spain, Holland, and Chile, we are going to see that this country, especially Spain and Poland, they, are, they, they try to reach, they have to, 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 to decrease the distance between the grower and the, and the final consumer. In Chile, still, the offer is consolidated, is, is consolidated for export. So those are big companies that usually they are going to, sometimes they are going to have their own, uh, their, own uh, uh, their, their, their own land, okay? Uh, so, so uh, if what is happening is that the supermarkets are going to be, or in general, the market is going to, to be looking a bit closer to the uh, to the, the grower. Okay. So, uh, the retail market in the United States is also changing. It's also changing the way that Europe changed 20 years ago. Okay. So, one of the um, one of the things that you are going to see that the retailers are going to want closer control. A typical example is Walmart. Walmart is trying to get uh, consolidation centers closer to the grower. Okay. Now the question is, is that going to come to Chile? Probably. Okay, we don't know that. But uh, but something that we can do, what we can do is we can try to anticipate that change. Okay. Um, so what, something else that you see in uh, in the in the in general in the, in the fruit uh, fresh fruit market is actually the the final consumer has a lot of is very changing okay so you cannot rely uh, rely just into into products apples and grapes okay so every time that you are going to see something every time that you go to a supermarket you are going to see a new a new product so, and because of that, the supply chain needs to change and needs to address those that, that issue. So you need to have you know, a supply chain that is going to be flexible. You need to have a supply chain that is going to be versat versatile and innovative. And innovative in the sense of getting new products into the market. So what we do is logistics. Logistics, but apply to, uh, to, to the realm of agricultural logistics. So in the case of fresh fruits, actually the logistics and the plan and the supply chain is very complex. Very complex because you cannot store a whole lot of production. Okay. So you have to be very uh, efficient the way that do things. Some of the things that, that, that you have to do is to, to have all those different, uh, all those different characteristics, but in, in a few words, you have to be very efficient the way that you do things. 
So for instance, what are the logistics required for fresh agricultural products, in particular those products that I show you that they, they have the, the, the highest growth? You have to be very, uh, you have to deliver very fast. You have to, uh, the logistic cost is going to be a high percentage of the total under cost of the product, so you have to uh, work in this. So some, something that we have learned that any initiative to improve logistics or so product offering need to be approached in an integrated way. So because of that, so you have to, to work with grower organization, in particular, how to offer a good, uh, a co uh, how to work in a, a good consolidation uh, offer. So now this is, well, this is a challenge. It's also an, an opportunity for, uh, for Chile. What is in Chile, most of the, uh, of the uh, fruit uh, growers are going to be big uh, companies. And actually, they have, they, They've been consolidated for the last 20 years. Now, in the last in the last uh, five or ten years, because of these new products, there is an opportunity for actually to create or to incentivize the appearance of a, uh, small farmers. But for a, for a small farmer, it's going to be very difficult to reach the final market unless that you have the infrastructure that is going to allow you to do that. That's going to include how to do how to do consolidation centers how to work with, with the shipping companies or the, 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 the logistic companies and how to do uh, distribution center in the US. So that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to be working on. So, but be, before do, we do that, uh, we have to work in different levels of planning. From the strategic planning, tactical planning, operational planning. I'm not going to go into that uh, further, just to, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to just tell you that there is, um, that you have to have very precise, very sophisticated planning models behind each one of these uh, levels of planning. Okay. So one of the objectives for us, one of the research objectives is to provide growers, especially small growers with, uh, of uh, highly perishable products, such as uh, the, the, the products that I showed you, with a planning tool of uh, the supply chain that will allow them to maximize the profit by saying directly to, uh, to the fund distributors. And if possible to the final consumer. <coughs> so we've been working on that for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Uh, this is some of the students that, uh, that uh, I've been working with. And the idea is to apply our uh, experience to Chile. Uh, so some of the things that we're going to try to do is to, to, to incorporate those these models. So. The idea is that we're going to tackle the issues of agricultural supply chains uh, using industrial engineering tools, so using engineering tools such as the optimization tools, statistic analysis and inference and risk management to identify uh, opportunities, market to work opportunities. Okay. So what are the, our reserve objectives in Chile? It's adapt to Chile and further refine supply chain planning model for perishable agricultural commodities. We have uh, mostly worked in fresh vegetables, not fresh fruits. So we're going to, to try to apply those in fresh fruits. Adapt those models uh, to design market and distribution channels that, that, that allow the direct insertion of small farmers into the already successful Chilean export industry of fresh uh, fruits. We don't want to change the industry. We want to, to use the success of that so that we can incorporate uh, this, uh, the smaller farmers. What is the underlying idea? Uh, Chile needs to pro proactively adapt its market distribution practices to be able to compete advan advantageously with other providers of fresh fruits in the global market. If Chile doesn't change, surely you are going to observe what you have been observing the last five years. By the way, I, something that I didn't mention is that the export of uh, agricultural products in, in Chile is as uh, after uh, minerals is as, uh, the, the, most, uh, the most important part of the economy. So the, the, the issue will be addressed by defining rapid uh, market response supply chain that can adapt in a very short time by changing market conditions. So that's going to be the focus of what we're going to be doing. So the main research activities for today is going to be how to adapt market intelligence tools, mapping the current supply chain, and to adapt the appropriate supply chain uh, to attain Chains that give the small uh, farmers in Chile competitive and comparative advantage in the global in the global market. Chile has already some very important advantages. Climate is one of them. Organization is one of them. The uh, uh, the uh, 
the structure of the of the, uh, the agricultural um, film Chile is, is very strong. So the long term object is to is to develop decision support frameworks that are going to help the farm organization to identify geographical regions with a uh, with a hidden potential to pro to produce high value crops. So the idea is to anticipate the market even if, even before the market tells us that, that there is something that is 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 uh, that is selling well is to anticipate that. Uh, so finally, is to develop tools through which farmers can be integrated into, into established agricultural production. Actually, the, the small farm integration is a, is a very important and very complex issue. Uh, so I would like to say as a conclusion that the Fulbright stage is just a starting point across a billion research educational agenda around the development of efficient supply chain practices to efficiently, efficiently match the, the, the demand of fresh agricultural products to the farm production. So it is working with the uh, Chilean University, what we want to build is a common research agenda. Thank you.